What's up, everybody? Make sure y'all smash that thumbs up, boy. Make sure you subscribe. Hey, living. Hey, bada bing, bada boom. Good morning, good morning. Come on, me. Ride on me. Body here, we just smash that like button. What up, the roach? How you doing? What's up? No. Bro, we're going to have a talk about it. Valley Alley, what's good? How are you doing? Welcome in. The following film is intended for mature audiences and contains adult content, graphic language, graphic violence. Viewer discretion is advised. Like, we'll leave it up to you. Sophia in the building. What's up, Sophia? Hold on, y'all. My camera's not. Hold on. Y'all, my camera acting funny. We gotta fix this camera right quick. Technical difficulties on the little show, but we're gonna get together. There we go. We got it right this morning. All right. Sophia in the building to translate for us. Period. Okay, Sophia, where have you been, girl? We didn't need your translation. Okay. Y'all, all the this shenanigans going on. Hey, dog, how you doing? Welcome in, welcome in, welcome in. Um, but no, so living. So what happened with um barbecue chicken? So Chantel is reporting again. Okay, so. That being said, y'all, we gotta keep it light over here, okay? We cannot come at Chantel hard. We can kiki though. We can kiki at her. She don't mind a kiki. But we gotta tread lightly, okay? Um, she's just, uh, to me, I mean, she's just getting tired. She's just getting fed up with all the reaction channels. Sound is bad? Uh oh. Hold up. Oh. Okay, what about that? Does that help any? Is that better? Hold on. Make sure we got the sound going right. Let me just connect the audio and see if that works. Y'all, we have a little difference on leftover show this morning. Go ahead and try to hold us. Oh, oh, now it's good. Okay, it's good. Yeah, it was the AC. I'm sorry. I had the AC on. Yeah, because we in Florida. You know how I get down here. Um, so. We gotta give we gotta give Foodie some time to recuperate. She getting a lot of shit from different angles. So, but I put together um, this Kuwait arc series um, before she left for Kuwait in Flying Fat. So we all know she did the video Flying Fat, okay? Which I thought was a whole kiki. Um, but anywho, anywho. So thank y'all for being here. Make sure y'all smash that thumbs up, but make sure you subscribe if you're not if you have not already. Um, just to let you know, guys, we are only 400 watch hours away from our monetization. Thank you for everybody's support. Thank y'all for the rewatching. That has helped out tremendously. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. And not to mention, y'all, we are only $500 away. Oh, it's the mic. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's go to settings. Get the audio. Hello, hello. Turn it off. Okay, let's do this. Okay. Yeah, and, and I, I'm gonna give me a, a, a new microphone. Okay, so that's mic off right there. Okay, how's that sound? How does that sound? Please tell me it sounds good. If not, leftovers don't, don't know what he gonna do. <laughs> Maybe it's the sounds up too high too. Let me turn down a little bit. Yes, Valley. We're trying to get monetized in this piece, okay? Um, so let's give a little background information, okay? So we all know um, Foodie Beauty is in Kuwait right now. Um, all the drama surrounding them, 
Um, Salah's friend has just came out and told us this is, a, this is a scam. But here's the thing. I don't know if I'm going to fall for this. Okay. Now, I don't believe she's married for real, for real, but I don't know what they're doing behind the scenes. Um, but I really don't think she's 100% married yet. Um, and I think her friend did spill that tea. Well, it wasn't really tea because we already knew this. Okay. Um, but my thing is now he's doing vlogs. After he got the 3,000 subscribers, he's doing vlogs the next day. Okay. He knows that people are wanting to see foodies. So he's going to do these vlogs. He may throw a little um, title in there or something just to get the attention, to get the taps and whatever else. Who knows? But I do feel like this was a deploy for him to get a channel that's popping because he got 3,000 subscribers in one day. Y'all, who has done that in the past? Okay. Anyway, for those of you here now, I will be doing a panel at 5 p.m. with the one and only Hannibal, House of Hannibal, okay? <laughs> um, I don't know if it's going to be here or over there, but stay tuned. I will provide y'all with the updates as soon as I know. Um, so also, as I was saying before, we are only $500 away from our computer goal, y'all, period. Thank you for everybody who has helped and has donated and the ones who have been here to watch to help us get more people to come back to donate. <laughs> I appreciate every last one of y'all. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get straight into this bullshit. So the first one is, oh, we started backwards. Hold on, y'all. Let me make sure I got myself together first. Flying fit. Oh, Lord, it didn't mix them up on me. Okay, so let's put... Okay, so let's put, let's actually, let's do it that way. Let's start from this way. Okay. Let's start this way and work our way down. That's, hold on, y'all, hold on. Y'all, excuse Chef, he just got a lot going on this morning. Okay, it's not letting me switch up the order. So we're just going to go with the flow. Go. <laughs> That's all we can do, go with the flow. Yes, thank you, Liv. Smash that like button, y'all. Appreciate the love. Let's get started. Fat travel. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today's video is just going to be me and of course some Caesar juice, which is my favorite orange and carrot juice from here. It's so good. Mm. Yeah. All right. I need a beverage while I'm going to talk. Hey, I'm going to be talking in this video. Hey, YouTube world. How you doing? Welcome in. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Y'all. So, okay. At this point, I'm just going to say this. This is when she thought she was an expert at flying fat okay she's only traveled twice okay so i don't i wouldn't claim her to be an expert but she may have some knowledge to help a couple people out let's just keep going and see what foodie had to tell us about flying fat video it's a sit down and talk video i want to do a series of videos where i'm just talking about things that i know you guys would want to know about specifically pertaining to this travel journey because I do see a lot of comments, uh, people wondering, being my size, as big as I am, how did you travel to the Middle East? One of the hot, especially to one of the hottest places on the planet, Kuwait. If you've watched my channel, you've been with me for a while, you've seen my past videos, you've seen my life up until Good morning, now. Lindsay. How are you doing? So especially somebody like me, it's very shocking for someone like me to do something like that. I just want to say that I think this is a lesson that I don't think that people really understand that what people show you online is just what they show you online. I don't think that people really understand fully everything that's going on inside of me. And that's, you're not meant to. <laughs> These are things that I keep her 
Yeah, living that is actually that you're actually correct. A person that was an expert, even if they are being overweight, they would do everything possible and, and give you tips on how not to um, take up space and how to give other people the same comfort comfortability that you expect. Um, Valley Alley says, "Whatever happened to that hijab? Have we ever seen it again, or is it on a pile?" Is it on a pile on the floor in the bathroom? They don't. Sh sh that's what I don't get. I don't know. This hijab was very nice. This is where our girl had style. Her makeup was slayed. Okay, she didn't come to play with the <laughs> with the girls at all, y'all. She come to slay. Um, I don't know what happened to it though. I've never seen it again after this. Strange. Personal in my life. Um, and you think so, I, I have shared a lot of things with you guys. Yes, I have been very, very open. I'm going to be open to what I feel comfortable with being open with. So anyway, my point with all that was, um, I think that people don't really fully know me. They don't really know that I have this sense of burning desire to just sometimes. No, foodie. We know you. We know your burning desires. We know you, girl. We know you like the back of our hands. Experience life in a way I never thought that I would ever do it. And i that's how I like to live my life. Kind of spontaneously, just, you know, just crazy life. I love it. I love having a crazy life. All right. So this part one or episode one is going to be talking about my experience with the... Well, hold on. She's going to do this, do this in episodes, right? This is episode one. What happened to episode two? Did she cancel the series before it gets started? Girl, she canceled the series before she gets started. Foodie, now you know you owe a part two of this. Actual traveling as an uh, obese person, an overweight person, and uh, anything from the how I handled the heat, <laughs> uh, the seats, and just okay, all the extra activity. <laughs> uh, basically, again, if you're kind of new here, uh, or just a reminder, I'm a person who has come from a very sedentary lifestyle. Uh, I'm from Canada, and I not used. I don't. I'm not, I'm not a person who loves the heat. I'm not a person who loves activity, and all of those things that I have to do here. But I am a person who does love to challenge myself when I feel the time is right. I have done that in my past, and I'll get into that now. You like to challenge yourself. So why didn't you challenge yourself when you were at the last vlog you just posted on a couple channel? Why didn't you climb the stairs? That would have been a challenge, okay? That would have been a challenge. So I don't think you always like I think the challenges that you like to do are the challenges that fit you best. Whatever challenge is going to make you have the most, you go, you know what I'm saying? Get your bang for your buck, okay? At the end of the day, you, you don't do everything that challenges you, boo. Say that story. So just a bit of a history with flying. Um, I know that flying fat is a huge topic for people who are overweight. It's a big anxiety. Traveling when you're overweight, uh, doing anything when you're uh, excessively overweight is extremely difficult. Now, now she's speaking facts on this. Yes. Okay. Flying fat. Okay. So this was, this was when she first landed in Kuwait. This is in Salah's apartment. Yeah, this is Salah's apartment. She first landed. Um, one of the first videos she ever did there. Um, bitch playing Canada for her sedentary life. <laughs> right? You know, you can't blame anybody but yourself. Um, different every, People come from the same place and turn out differently. And that's like even in the same household. You can have two people go up in the same households and turn out differently. Um, food eating challenge. What you mean for eating challenge? <laughs> that bada bee, bada boom. Uh, for a lot of people, including myself. And it makes traveling extra difficult, of course. I first went on an airplane when I was 10, and I was a pretty chubby kid, but I don't really remember the experience other than just my ears being blocked and my mom giving me chewing gum and, and insisting, 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 chew gum, chew gum, your ears won't pop. Sorry, I, I talk a lot with my hands, I know. I'm, I'm very, very happy, and I really love this Arabian gold. So, foodie, in my opinions, okay, this is my opinions are not facts, girl. 
you don't always talk with your hands. You just started this when you got that ring on your finger because you wanted to rub it in all your haters' face, okay? And all the reaction channels, you wanted all of them to know that you were married and you wanted to show it off to the world, which I don't blame you, okay? I cannot blame you, no. Because if I got married, I'd be like, Bitch, look. <laughs> I really would. I'm not even going to front on that, y'all. But you, do, the fact that you say you talk with your hands, you really don't, boo. Don't tell us that story. Uh, she will. Oh, she bought a V. Yeah, she probably would. Lindsay said she's going to show us how to book a third seat for, for the way home. Then we'll, we'll have reinforcements. <laughs> you know, Lindsay, you're probably right on that one. She, because I think our girl has gained a couple pounds sitting there. Because if Salah's gained weight, I'm sure she's gained some weight. <laughs> Just putting that out there. Yes, I'm showing off my ring. <laughs> I was 10 and we were going to Florida to visit my grandfather who resides in Florida. And that's all I remember about the flight. I wasn't terribly nervous. Now, fast forward to about 2001, I had traveled around Canada in a program called Katimovic, which was funded by the Canadian government. At the time, they would pay for youth to get out of their house and experience Canada, do something different, do some volunteer work. So I, I would volunteer um, 40 hours a week, actually, um, in Katimovic. Wow. And I remember purposely pushing myself to do this. Wow, Foodie volunteered? Foodie actually helped somebody in need and not just a crackhead? Oh, okay. Let's see where it's going. Uh, no one in my family believed that I would go for seven months, travel around Canada as a 17-year-old. Uh, alone. Do you blame a foodie? Do you blame him? Um, I was homesick at first. I do have some series on that on my channel and some videos, but um, that was the second time I had to use an airplane a couple of times. And it was a small plane. I remember that. I was 200 pounds, I think approximately 200 pounds at the time. Now, I don't remember feeling much anxiety about flying or about the seatbelt or anything like that. Um, 200 pounds is still not terribly super obese to the point where you won't fit on a plane or you fear that you you won't fit in public transportation. And actually, that brings me to my point where I you don't actually worry about fitting anywhere until it actually happens, that dreadful, embarrassing moment. Sorry, I need some juice. The juice? Okay, is it just me or does she not like this juice, y'all? This juice, she takes baby sips. I really feel like she doesn't like this juice. She said it was her favorite, but typically when something is your favorite, you'll get it over and over again. It's just me or I, I have not seen her get this juice after this time. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I may have missed it. I may have clocked that, didn't clock that tea, but she does not drink this anymore. And the pickles here. Top notch. So over the Top years, pickles. Girl, hush. <laughs> I my weight increased, increased, increased over the years. What's up, Wookie Lover? And it got to the weight that it was, which was very excessive, um, especially for health and everything else like that. Um, you guys know I'm a person who's all about body positivity, loving who you are, regardless of your shape, size, whatever. But um, when it comes to damaging your health, that's a bit uh, of a different issue for me. But nope, regardless, I do still think that now. people, while they're dealing with their health issues, have a right to be comfortable and happy traveling and living life and not feeling like a complete outcast. But um, so... Uh, FYI, y'all, excuse the attire. I'm in the middle of doing laundry right now, so I just threw something out, period. Let's, let's continue. But um, listen to how... Like, listen to... He trying how she, oh, she, listen to she trying to tell a story of her weight gain. Ha <laughs> ha. Lindsay says, "Was this after the home you were put in by your mom?" Oh, oh, y'all got so much tea on our girl. Damn. I did travel to Cuba. That was the first trip um, in April where I was feeling some anxiety. The rose said. You know what? At this point, it doesn't matter what she says mentally. I'm like, girl, shut the hell up. <laughs> Period. <laughs> okay, I'm going to say I was as terrified as I've probably been thinking about a flight. Uh, I was, you know, I would, in preparation, I would like obsessively just look for seats that, you know, maybe. 
No, no, Valley Girl. You missed it. I mean, Valley Alley. You missed it, okay? She's allowed to fat shit. <laughs> She's, she, we can't fat shape, but she can fat shape when she's bad or, or, or when they talk about her, she can fat shape. We just can't do it, okay? <laughs> maybe a window seat, maybe at the back, no one will sit beside me. I was hoping, you know, am I going to have to buy two seats? Just all these anxieties were flooding in my brain. I'm getting at people were, you need two seats, you need two seats. Don't, don't, don't put yourself on someone else. Don't, you know, don't take up space. Don't take up space. No, I'm going to tell you. Never be afraid to take up space. Take up space, right? This is where I have a problem at, y'all. Okay, so foodie, okay? And I don't want to offend any person out there by saying you should not take up space because sometimes you really don't have that option. And I get it. I get it. I get it. But with that being said, you should try to take up as little space as possible. Don't make yourself extra comfortable while allowing somebody else beside you to be uncomfortable. That's the best way I can explain that. If they're uncomfortable, you need to be uncomfortable because it's your fault why they're uncomfortable and they pay the same amount of money for their one seat. I have nothing against the big people by any means having, or who cannot afford to buy two seats. But you, Huzzy, if you can afford <laughs> to buy two seats, you need to buy two seats. If you can afford to give men all this money that we're hearing about, pay an extra seat, girl. Give somebody their space. Have respect for the other human visual. Um, Valley Alley. Yeah. All oh, right. I forgot. Right. <laughs> uh, living with Living said yes. If we were, if you were a decent human, you would have to. You would have bought two seats. Absolutely. She would have bought two seats because we all know she can afford it. For those of us who cannot afford to buy two seats, do the best you can to do the best you can. Okay, what I'm saying? I, that's all I got to tell you. Do the best you can to not take up space. I'm, um, <laughs> the Rose says, if her big funky ass was next to me <laughs> on a plane, listen here. <laughs> Stewardess! <laughs> uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> she needs a second seat. No. However, um, when I got Ooh, on the plane, Libby says, if you need to uh, get afford it, don't fly. Plane, Ooh, I did damn. review on that, but it was just that was my first experience. I think that broke the ice for me, and I kind of expected all economy seats to be kind of similar standard size. Now, I'm an apple shape, so from the side, I'm more larger than wide like this. I don't have very wide hips, so I carry I love most that. of my weight in my abdomen. I love the apple reference. Therefore, I, love the apple reference. I was able to fit in the seat um, all right. It was a little snug, but it wasn't uncomfortable. It wasn't digging in. Uh, however, I did need a seatbelt extender because the seatbelt was like coming like this. <laughs> you know, I needed that extra space. So I had the seatbelt extender and... Um, they were very nice. I just asked the flight attendant. Now, those are things that if you are embarrassed to do, because people did look at me, like literally the plane was like. <laughs> Could you imagine Chantel on the plane? Stewardess, I need a seatbelt extender. Everybody like, well, damn, I'm sure she can see you need a seatbelt extender. Calm down, boo-boo. Like everybody's staring at you, watching you put the seatbelt extender on. Like that's embarrassing. I don't care how you look at it. I, I don't know if I can manage more power to that. More power to people flying fat. Okay, because I don't know if I can fly fat. As I'm a very shy person when it comes to being embarrassed. I don't like to be embarrassed. I don't. <laughs> that is my thing. I do not like to be embarrassed. Um, don't have wide hips, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> um. You are a whole ass lie, bitch. You get if it's your gut is <laughs> so busy. Oh, yeah, she did say that. She did say that her train didn't come all the way down, so she's the one next to her. Thank God nobody was sitting beside her because she would have been screwed on how she would. How would she eat? She had to use her stomach as a table tray. Yeah, already filling up and. The the stewardess was kind of like busy a little bit and I had to just kind of like say, hey, can I have a seatbelt extender? 
and everyone watched me ask her like everyone so and and that to me honestly I guess I'm just lucky I just don't place I've learned over the years I guess it's taken a bit of mental work I guess but I've just always just never really cared too much about what people think about me in public you guys know that <laughs> so luckily for me I was like hey like I'm like Lindsay said <laughs> They were like, ma'am, stay there. And five people moved to the left side of the, of the play, okay, to balance the weight. Girl, I did. <laughs> Lindsay. Kind of person, let's just put it this way. I'm the kind of person that's like, no matter who I am, what size I am, what I look like, it's like, I will go anywhere in the world and be like, hey, here I am. This is how I am. You know, I'm not going to apologize for it. So that's that's how I dealt with the Sunwing situation. Um, now for this trip, uh, specifically, I flew with Qatar Airlines. I heard that it was a bit more comfortable. Uh, maybe the seats were a bit larger. So I just figure, you know what? I'll just ask y'all. So you know what? She could do something else. It's better than flying with Qatar. Um, in Pirates and Pirates is one of the best freaking airlines to fly on. They have beds, showers in the rooms. Y'all, They ha it's a whole kiki. Like, there was a YouTuber who flew and he paid 20, well, no, it was a she. She paid $25,000 for one ticket. But all her food was free. She got, like, to order whatever food she wanted to eat, how much she wanted to eat. Um, she got uh, moist toilet, uh, a, a, a bag with some eye stuff, eye cream, face cream. She got free liquor. The bar was open bar. Like, but she, her, her thing turned into a bed. It, it had a door where you could shut the door for privacy. It was a really nice place. And she had all the space. That's what foodie beauty needs when she flies. If she's flying fat, Y'all, and I'm going to do some reactions. Y'all stay tuned to, to these people who are flying luxuriously. Foodie really needs to get on board with that because she would have so much more fun flying. It wouldn't be so, you know, <clears throat> such a headache. That's for a seatbelt extender. It's a longer flight, but I thought, hey, I can do this. So I just have the attitude. I can do this. You can do this. You're going to do this. And I just do it. I don't know. I just do it. And um, maybe a part of it is just I'm kind of a bit of an adrenaline junkie a little bit where uh, in in a sense where I like to push myself and I find Trisha Payetas did that. It was so nice. Yeah, there was a guy who who did it as well, too. I think it was a guy who did it, but he had a, a chauffeur. The, the airport <clears throat> sent a chauffeur in a limo to pick him up. I said, well, for twenty five thousand dollars, they better get you to the airport. A period find that even more now I'm loving pushing myself even more so what I have to say about the 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 trip um when I got to the Montreal airport the walking wasn't too bad it wasn't too far I had to walk to the uh, check-in uh with Qatar Airlines in the Montreal airport now leaving Canada was where all of the I need to walk everywhere happens <laughs> and, and things just get more uh, okay okay uh, uh, valley alley as, as I travel I'll hold you today. so I got no. on the plane and my seat was like way at the back and I heard someone say in the the stewardess say like we have a full plane so I kind of like oh, looked at the seat beside me and I thought oh no 12 hours with somebody that I don't okay could y'all imagine Booty having to walk to the back of the flight. She says she didn't care. Like she said, she's unbothered, wasn't embarrassed, has some seatbelt extender. But you got to walk past all these people smelling like from from, from a lot of cheese. Like, girl, and being your size is already bad enough. They're already looking, staring at you. <clears throat> so when you walk from the front of the plane to the back, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, foodie. I'm sorry you dealt with that girl. Oh, why can't you push yourself to get your own food then? Girl, she likes to be challenged, but she don't like those kind of challenges or get her own packages neither. Uh, her leaving a stink ass child on you know, my own way. <laughs> like one of those, y'all remember those um those farts in the little tooth thing? You take them and you bust them on the ground and they stink real bad. Why <laughs> was like going out the house I don't know and like maybe a strange person uh, I don't know so but I knew it was a possibility so but I had a window seat that was the best thing for me because I love looking out the window um 
And of course, right at the back near the lavatory, because I want to avoid just having to walk down long aisles through people. Um, maybe that is a little bit of an insecurity. I just, I don't know, but I just, yeah. Um, the lavatory, you're all wondering about the lavatory and the planes. Um, actually, it's actually big enough. Like the door, I thought the door was only this big, but it's actually, there's two doors like that and they fold in half. So you take the the door and you just open it and it folds open and then you close it behind you. And actually the lavatories in the Qatar Airlines bathrooms are actually really nice. They have like air, uh, oh, the toilet and everything. Did Foodie Beauty take that, take that picture or was that something she found online? I think she found a line. I really wish she would have took a selfie of her in that bathroom. That would have gave, you know, the bigger people more, um, more of a, of an idea of how she fit in there. So how they would fit on there. If she wasn't afraid to put herself out there as fat and big, she would have took a selfie in that bathroom or a video in that bathroom to show everybody, hey. This is how much space I have left. Blah, blah, blah. Don't worry. Whatever it had to be. That's what she should have done, in my opinion. They had, like, everything. And um, there was enough room. It was a little snug, but I actually had enough room to, like, stand up and move around and wash my hands and everything. Um, is she wearing her <laughs> lace sneakers on <laughs> Hey, Tip Top, welcome to the live stream. You came here hot this morning. Thing. So I was like, yes, okay. Um, so that was good. Um, I did actually get to check out the bathroom because that, honestly, airplane bathrooms, this is, again, just one thing. Well, well living, that was a problem when she went to Cuba, yeah. Uh, she didn't fit in, inside the airline bathroom, but I think that's why she did more research this time. Because if you think she could travel that far without taking a deuce or a pee, Y'all are grave and mistaken. And she ate before the flight and she ate during that flight. Y'all, you know she had to go there and take a poop. Living says, but yet, yeah, but Chef, she is not insecure. Right. She's totally insecure. Totally. And I'm not saying anything wrong for her for being insecure, because sometimes I'm insecure. You know, absolutely. But she shouldn't portray herself as not being insecure. She's insecure. <laughs> That's not a lie. One thing, if you're a bigger person, you'll understand. Airplane bathrooms are so tiny. <laughs> that, right, yeah, okay. it like freaked me out. I was like, oh my yeah, God, she's like, just stuck, timid, or I don't she eat anything. Just, like, all these irrational thoughts just poured into my brain. So, but because I was at the back near the lavatory, um, I actually got to talk to a lot of nice people because. Y'all remember her live streams when she went inside the woods. Well, okay, when she was eating in her car in the middle of the night. And then she went in the woods because she couldn't hold it. And she got home and took a deuce. That goes to show you right there. Foodie can't hold her bowel movements. Okay. So when she got to go, she, she got to go. Um, I actually made friends with a nice Iranian woman. And she was waiting to use the bathroom. There was like a queue. People would queue near my seat. And I would just talk to people. <laughs> so, yay. Bathroom beezing. So if y'all remember when she went to Cuba, she bought diapers. Yeah, I remember that, right? She did buy diapers when she took Cuba. Um, so, Wookie Lover said, can you imagine the sneak if she had to wear a diaper? No, thank you. Okay, I, when you're on a, a plane, there's no ventilation system, like outside air coming in. There's none. There's no window you can open. There's nothing you could do but endure the smell. That's why it's very, that's why you guys, when y'all get on airplanes, make sure y'all take a bath, put on the old rig. You know what I'm saying? Do the best you can, because it don't get on a plane with a diaper prepared to shit on yourself. <laughs> uh, what about a shiwi? Would that make things easier? What's a what's a a shiwi? What's a shiwi tip top? <laughs> So once I had my seatbelt extender in and once I heard that I was waiting, I was waiting nervously looking like, okay, look, the suspense. Is somebody going to come and sit in my seat? You know, everyone's moving down the aisles. And sure enough, um, finally the pilot was like um, all passengers on board and nobody was sitting beside me. So, so I actually didn't purchase two seats. I, I never purchased two seats. I just, I'm okay with the seatbelt extender. Wait, wait, wait. So well, I'm confused. If... <clears throat> 
if somebody would have got on the plane <laughs> beside her, would she have bought two seats? No, it was too late at that point. At that point, it's too late. You couldn't buy two seats. Something would have happened. I don't know what they would have did or what they would have said, but something would have happened. Um, Wookie Lover says she making it annoying talk to poor, poor folks walking to use waiting to use the bathroom. Yeah, she did say she was talking to people whole time. She's probably just asked, she probably was asking them how big is it? <laughs> how big is it? Embarrassing. Uh, nope, everything is recirculating. Right, the same damn air. Hey, no, Boo, welcome to the live stream. That being able to <laughs> hold her bowels and having shit right after a meal is not normal at all. <laughs> right. And I actually um, had this seat to myself because it wasn't a full. Wait, uh, oh, I see those. I see those off of, uh, what I see those from? I see them from something. Those were on like, Wish. I said wish. <laughs> it's like you put it up there. <laughs> you said it me. That's nasty. She would have made it. She she can't use that. She can't use that. If she can't wipe herself, how's she gonna hold that down there? Think about it. She had that bathroom in a mess. <laughs> the atrocity. <laughs> yes, tip top. Her arms are too short to use a pee <laughs> full plane so i was actually really lucky i got to put my leg up and just rest and i actually one thing being bigger and especially in the abdomen area um, right. I find is uh, a problem yeah wookie lover that may you may be right you may be on something i didn't think about that um the fact that the plane is full they don't say a plane is full and it's not full because i've been on a plane that was not full it had like seats sporadically missing here and there and they never say, oh, playing full. No, girl. I'm on you airplanes for me see. is the table tray. I'm not able to actually fully full, uh, fold down the tray in front of me. It hits my stomach a little bit. So what I did was I actually just used the tray from the, the empty chair and just used that as my mealtime tray, which was fine. And the little toiletries kit they give you on the plane. Uh, I remember in my first vlog, there was a little um, pouch with a whole bunch of things in it. And I didn't really uh, know at the time what it was. So they give you like a toothbrush, toothpaste. They give you a pair of socks. They give you um, a blanket, which is in like a plastic wrap. Oops, so sorry. A new blanket. I actually kept it as a souvenir. Why not? And I kept the socks. Um, they give you some headphones. They give you a mat. Um, a foodie. In the world of coronavirus i think they want you to keep the, this stuff they wouldn't just give it to you not let you keep it yeah they want you to keep it <laughs> the airlines is not about to go off and do laundry okay because because you can have that wrapped around your body they want you to keep it ask and some earplugs so because there was a screaming child on board the whole time so i actually okay there's a screaming child and a funky adult <laughs> Make your point. They both annoying. Like the earplugs. Once I put the mask on, I just like I like I showed you in my video. I actually did doze off even without my CPAP. <laughs> Y'all wonder why I gave everybody a mask on the airplane? <laughs> it wasn't because of COVID. <laughs> That's a problem because I do use a CPAP machine that uh, I couldn't plug that in. Um, but I didn't really need it. I was able to just doze in and off, and I knew that once I got to my destination, I would be able to sleep. I was tired, though, um, arriving at the uh, Hamad International Airport. You have to look this airport up if you don't believe me. So I walked around the airport for a long time until I finally found somebody, like it was a connecting flight, until I finally found somebody uh, who looked up, who scanned my ticket and looked up which gate I needed to go to. And they were like, you need to go to gate C. Okay, I flew several times, y'all. For one, I love to fly, okay? Because when the stories come through, ask you want some drink, yes, I want some vodka and cranberry. That's what I get on a flight, vodka and cranberry, okay? I don't play with it, and I took a nap. Um, but the fact that Foodie did not know how to find a gate when it clearly states it on the airline tickets. It says what gate you need to be at. And all you got to do is follow the signs. <clears throat> For some people, if it's your first time, yeah, I can see how you're being lost not knowing the gate numbers is on there, how to find the gate numbers. But my first time, I found it just fine. I have asked for help. Um, but foodie, this is just second time flying, girl. You should be, a, you, you claim to be a pro at this, okay? My experience, okay, you need to pay more attention when you're in these airports.
they're all built the same way as far as like the gates. The structurally, no, but the gates, how you listen to it, they're all built like that. So I think C39 or something like that. Anyway, so okay, then Lindsay, I was like, my drink too, period. Far? And she's like, oh, yes, miss, it's too far. You're going to need a train. So you need to go stand. There's a little location where you stand if your gate is really far hey, off. Hey, Janie, how you doing? Welcome train. to the live stream. So, or this little cart. So this guy kept. Uh, this yeah, guy with this line, and, um, yes. was bringing us to the gate Miss and Risa. the whole way he's like excuse me that's why i kept putting it in my video because the whole way excuse me excuse me excuse me almost running people over and just speeding across the airport um hugest airport i've ever seen in my life it's huge huge i think it was uh rated the number one airport in the world right now y'all do y'all think that car <laughs> was going that fast and I say that because y'all remember that ATV she got on, right? Okay. But it is, I underestimated how large it is. It's bad. <laughs> so I was um, actually very thankful for that because I was actually really tired and it would have been a heck of a hike with my luggage. So I just, uh, yeah, they, they dropped me off at my gate and then I had to wait for a bit and took the connecting flight into uh, Kuwait. Wait, hold up. Y'all, she previously said that she wouldn't have had time to make it through her gate because it was so far. So they had to give her a ride. She's a liar. She just said she sat there for a couple minutes. I mean, for a while, waiting on her gate to open up so she can get on a plane. Y'all, foodie, make it make sense. You would have had time. You just didn't want to endure that long ass walk. I feel you, girl. It's a long walk. Or you, and you weren't used to that. <laughs> you could have just said that. <laughs> so. When I got off the plane in Kuwait, I had to, um, I, it was, it was just, it was so hot. It was so hot that even just being in the air conditioned <laughs> airport, I could feel like myself starting to sweat a bit. And then I had to walk around. I was really tired. This was, um, I was getting really tired at this point and I just, I was kind of crabby and um, not hungry because we were well fed on the planes. No um, tip. With stacks, even on the connection the flight, tomato juice hour, they gave us Don't the want that. Some juice, uh, so I was okay there. But oh my gosh, when I got to, when I got to Kuwait, I just wanted to get in the car, air conditioning, and, <laughs> and you know, get to my destination. And um, I just, it was so hot. Like just, just the few seconds I was outside, it was so hot. It hasn't been super hot since then. It's been in the 20s, so it's not too bad. But that one day I arrived, yeah, it was really hot. Um, okay, so y'all, okay, so that lucky happened to me. So when I moved from Oklahoma to uh, to Florida the first time, y'all, I didn't know that um, it was going to be that hot in Florida. I really didn't. I was not experienced, okay? I knew it was going to be, like, a temperature Difference, obviously, coming from the Midwest to the South. I knew it was something different, but I didn't know it was going to be that big. Girl, I, I got on that plane because it was cold. I had my scarf on. I had a tank top on. I was smart about that. I had like a cute little tank top shirt, these pants, and some uh, uh, Chelsea boots. I was cute. I was just to impress. Got on that plane. I felt comfortable. I got on the plane, had a good ride. Girl got to the airport and burnt the head up in them, in them damn pants. Everybody walk around in t-shirts and shorts. I'm like, oh, no, baby. I'm here all boot fled. Go get out of a scarf. <laughs> um, I was sweating. Research, y'all. Research. Buckets of sweat. I was sweating a lot, a lot, a lot. Ugh. It's a complete new environment for me and everything like that. So I just wanted to share a little bit of with you about my experience traveling here. I know a lot of you have questions. Uh, and I hope I answered some of them for you. So in closing, I guess I can say, I just, yeah, it was hot and hard to do. It was hard to do to travel um, being so overweight, but it was worth it. And it, I challenged myself to do it. And I feel better having come out the other side. And furthermore, I really, really appreciate you guys coming along on this journey with me. So I think- Oh my God. I see the filters. Yo, I see the filters. Oh my God, I see the filters. This is the whole filter video. Wow, girl. Ooh. Um, Pink Karma said 90 day fiance the other way. <laughs> wow, I see the Thank filters. Thank you for watching my videos. 
and we'll see you in the next one. Bye guys. Okay, so based on her experience of flying fat, y'all, do you guys think that she gave out enough information? Now, keep in mind, she was supposed to do a series, okay? This is supposed to be episode one. Where the hell episode two went to, I don't know, but she did clearly say she's going to do a series for flying fat for all her fat followers, which that would be amazing because nobody's really doing that. <clears throat> There's a couple of people that are doing it, but that's a big market. Foodie could do that. Like she, she has the money to fly what she wants and have a good time. Fly fat once a week, girl, and give your experience on different airlines. Taste table which airlines you recommend. They're going to eventually start wanting you to do videos for them to attract bigger people to fly so they make more money. Period. Girl, you get some free tickets. Oh, wait, read the comments, read the comments. Um <laughs> Lindsay said such inspiration. Uh, Lindsay, yes, yeah, she's very inspirational, very, very much so. Wookie Lover said she does zero prep for anything, like like thinking she can buy clothes there in straw in straws of packing like a normal person. Yeah, she packs like no, that 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 wasn't even normal. Okay, because if I pack for a trip, if I'm going for three days, I'm packing for a week. Okay, I'm packing for a week. If I'm going on a trip for three days, if I'm going on a trip for one day, I'm packing for three days, and I'm bringing options. Okay, I'm bringing options because you never know what kind of event you have to go to. What you got? You know what I'm saying? You got to bring options. Lizzie says, "Chef, she is using slimming filters. Have you seen the real foodie?" Hmm. I no, absolutely not. Except for in the vlogs, I only think she, I think she used filters there too. Uh. I watched her after smoking one night. Her filters had me tripping because they kept glitching. Carnivore. <laughs> you thought it was a weed at first, huh? <laughs> no, she didn't. And like, as always, zero follow through. Absolutely. It's the amount of work she had to put into it. And she don't want to put in any kind of work. Episode two, how to get a fat fish in Duke No. <laughs> Sorry, I have typos at all. I'm over. It's okay, Mookie lover. The top. Um, none of her clothes were appropriate for Kuwait. Yeah, no, none of them. And she's still wearing a sabaya. Like the women over there are used to wearing a bias. Okay, they're used to that heat, so they're not over there sweating. They're used to it. Their bodies have been been accustomed. They're acclimated. They're acclimated to that weather. Foodie's not, and Foodie has a lot more skin. So she's gonna be hotter. So I don't think wearing a a, a baya is that. But I think the abaya was her husband's idea because y'all remember at first his friends said he was ashamed. Basically, he wouldn't ever he, he wouldn't allow his friends to see her and like that because he kept saying she was sick or he was sick or blah, blah blah. So I think he made her wear the abaya to hide a figure, well, her non-existent figure. Um, <laughs> Wookie Lover said, slimming it in smoothing filters. Her face is round and no chin either. Ooh. And those uh, abaya stink when you buy them. Need to be washed several times before wash. Oh, really? I did not know that. Of course, he drawn. Oh, that's why that man was spraying the abaya's nest. So, because he was spraying with some kind of spray. That's why. Thank you, Wookie Lover. Come through with the plug. Of course, he tried. <laughs> Uh, I agree, definitely his idea. Yes, yes, ma'am. Okay. Well, Western women don't even have to wear them. She should wear comfy maxi dresses. Can you imagine her? Yeah, she should. She should make so comfortable. Don't wear this kind of stuff. Like, hell, she could wear a muumu and make this comfortable, okay? And just, and just as covered. She's got a neck on the back. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, foodie, foodie beauties. beauties. <laughs> Hi, Marhaba. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to another video. Yes, I have decided to do a video to talk a bit about foodie. Looks like she's lost a lot of weight in this video, y'all. Them filters do magic. Should I use them filters too? Okay, G give me a filter. I guess just what's on my mind, and I didn't really feel like going live. As you know, I'm kind of. 
in weird moods. And sometimes I just feel like doing video. Yeah, hold on, y'all. I'm expanding where y'all can see where y'all can see this burn on her lip. Is that a burn or is that a hurt? What's your opinion? A burn or a herpy? Videos. So I'm just wanting to, I guess, talk about some, I don't know if it's like prejudices or what you would call it, but definitely misconceptions. And this is going to sound super snotty. Hi, Lisa. How you doing? Every woman out there to know. Wait, why the hell was she zooming like that on that burn? Like it's a pipe burn. Why would she zoom in on that burn like that? Okay. Uh, Janie says herpes. <laughs> Tip shot says herpes. <laughs> Carnivore chick says herp. <laughs> okay, Janie changes the pipe burn. Okay. Hey, Mary. Good morning. How you doing? Lisa, I had a, a drug patient that would show up with pipe burps. Oh, okay. So that's a pipe burp. Yeah, because I don't see the bumps. Because wouldn't herpes have like a bumps surrounding it? Um, Lisa said, I hope you're very well. Um, she continues to have the heroes even recently. I heard <laughs> a lot of people think it's the herb. <laughs> If you are so desperate that you have to enter the DMs of somebody that I'm involved with or try to, I need you to know that any reply you get from anyone calling themselves Sala, like they even have the nerve to pretend to be that worthy, to even enter his DMs, any reply. No, Mary, but I did see that sad ass song. I seen it. I was gonna do a reaction to it. That's uh, why does she make those? Oh my god, those! Listen, she has the money to go to a studio, records a hit, put this nice little beat with it. Okay, at her at her status, that's what she should be doing for her intro at her status. This it is cringe. It, it, it's giving after the Titanic sunk. Like dead ass, it's giving after the Titanic song. Yeah, so she has this this, this new song off Tip Top. It's different. It's different from pathetic. It's, it's another one, but it's still pathetic. Ply <laughs> you get it's fake because this man spends hours on video call with me every day. Shows me. Wait. Okay, so hold on. She's talking about somebody being so desperate and sliding in a man's DM. How about Natter? How about you were so desperate in Kuwait that you slid into Natter's chat? Claiming she stole your man. Girl, if it ain't about me, let's kiki. Uh, at Chef, she is so transfixed on proving to Natter a man wants her. She can't think of anything else right. She can't function right. She really can't. She can't. Uh uh. Screenshots yeah. of every single person trying to follow him has all comments turned off, is not accepting new friend requests anywhere. And his dating app that you're so hanging on to as proof that this man doesn't love me. <laughs> Please, you're so gullible, just like you all accuse me of being. I'm sorry, or should I say, I apologize if I sound bitter. Yeah, I'm a little bitter. I'm trying to do better for my life, and I have people everywhere trying to pull me back down into the stinky bog with them. You can stay there. Uh, is that FFG? Lord, why she... <laughs> this is what FFG attacks her the way she do. Okay, she comes for FMG. She really does. I, I get it. FMG does go in on her a little bit. I do. I get it. I understand it. Um, but y you go in on her too. It's a it's a back and forth thing. It's a love hate thing, y'all too. I, I feel like I'm moving on up. I'm getting married. I'm going to live an amazing life. This move is happening. I'm glowing up in life behind the scenes. And from now on, I'm only allowing you whatever privacy 
I want to give you. And honestly, the way things are going to be going with my channel, probably not much. My privacy is something. No, okay. So again, y'all, this is all lies. This is the arc of lies. <laughs> There's several arcs of lies, but this is another arc of lies. Lies because she's telling here and she's going to keep it more privately. How are you going to make it more privately? You have not. You've advertised a lot of y'all shit. Okay. Now you kept some stuff advertised. I mean, um, some stuff you know off the internet, like as far as like his wife having to bathe you. You know what I'm saying? You kept some of that shit off offline. The shit that was going to embarrass you. But any other thing, y'all, um, Chef, I want to know what did Salah, what Salah did with, with, with my K. He probably used half to feed the C80. So, okay, so I was, so I was told about the 9,000. I, I was. But when you transfer that over to his way, to their money over there, it mounts to nothing. I think it ended up like being like $2,000, $2,500, $2,700 like that. But yeah, I wonder what he did with the money. Probably bought a new couch. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Replace furniture. Restock the food. Something I have not valued my entire Games. life. Do I regret Games, I bet that? you. I see people, desperate reaction channels and desperate women, trying to break this up but it's not going to happen why would sala why would you zoom in on this burn mark on your lips you, okay that look let's so I, i'm I, i'm gonna make it a little bit <laughs> bigger for us y'all okay let's debunk this okay girl you have multiple burn marks on your lips one there okay she got, she got one on the bottom lip one on the top lip one in the side corner of the mouth like her lips is, is toe up, like above the lip, on the lip, on the left of the lip. Why would you zoom in like this on your mouth, foodie? Like you just open the door for rest challenge to have some kind of tea and kiki. <laughs> I would never. Right, old. Why bother when your money ain't worth anything? Or you have to up the ante. Instead of 9000 you should send 18000 Because... And listen carefully, ladies. Why would Salah go for you girls? Okay, hold up. When he has a Canadian queen like me. Hold up. So I have I, I I've kissed plenty of men with beards. Okay, we gonna we gonna call a spade a spade, y'all. I have, and so what? I ain't never come out looking like that. Here we are. That's a bird mark. <laughs> you make no sense. Anyway. I'm just terribly bored with all the speculation I'm seeing. And I have to tell you, none of it's true. I want to just say, if I'm being scammed, why has he not made any videos to try to leech off my YouTube channel? Why has why has he not been pushing me to do content? Uh, his friend leached off the channel. His friend was a whole a leech. Okay. Um, he's leached off you with T, and now he's got a whole channel. So let's not say nobody came up in this aspect. Somebody did come up, ma'am. Why has he promised to take care of me as my husband? Whoa. What job? What job? Maybe he promised to take care of you physically, not financially. Because you're going to need physical help. That's That's what I can see. I'm not even trying to be, be funny, y'all. I'm just calling it like it is. It's not financial help. He quit his job. We, we all are aware, are aware of this so he could do YouTube. We, we've been speculating that for the longest. We're wondering why he hasn't went back to work. This is one reason why he hasn't went back to work. He quit his job. This is what a real man does. I have found myself a real man. Yes, halfway across the world. It's a vast world. Why am I going to be closed-minded and limit myself to someone here? Salah is my soulmate. He happens to be in another. Now, mind you, y'all, this is an old-ass picture of Salah. So he fat-fished her. I mean, she fat-fished him, and he old-fished her. Old pick fished her. Because this picture looks about maybe five, six years ago. It is not recent. Salah does not look like this right now. 
He was a lot more slimmer, which I, I'm not talking about his weight at all. I, I'm just saying it's an older picture. We all we can clearly see that, right? We all we're all on the same page. Let's keep going. Another country. So we're gonna make it happen. Chantel like to pray. She I destroys can. everything in her way. <laughs> and I will. <laughs> Poor Salah is using me for citizenship. Number one, we don't have green cards here. Sponsoring a spouse, yes, it's a big process. It's not just quick and easy like that. Also, who says he's even coming here right now? This is the thing. I even saw a rumor that he has no family. How are people making these Kay. claims when they don't even know? Kay, I can understand why I did that. Because, like, seeing how smug she is and... Salah, right? Salah, right? The way she ate that burger pissed me off. The way she ate that burger had me on 10. I'm not even gonna lie. That burger she ate had me on 10 when she ate that burger. All smug, like, how do you smug eat a damn hamburger? They know us. They don't know anything. And guess what? I felt bad for You're all those wives. To. Me too. I have every right to my all privacy. Business. I'm taking back my privacy. You can put like, every video, every thumbnail, right every oh, he did? picture of me you want of my past. And that hasn't scared him away. He knows who I am. He knows I'm foodie beauty. And Very much so. For me. As a person, I have a lot to offer. Just because I pick my nose in old videos means I'm not worthy of love. Okay. Or because maybe because I went through a hard time and I was in an abusive <laughs> relationship <laughs> and resorted to drugs <laughs> to cope with things. So that's going to be. No, we understand that. Booty. We clearly understand that nobody is drug shaming you, not one bit. Most of the people who follow you have went through their own drug problems or know people who went through drug problems. So nobody's shaming you, foodie. But you can sit up here and drug shame everybody who you know it was on drugs at one point in time or is on drugs. You you can do that though, right, foodie? You ought to not try to drug shame people. And worry about coping with your own problems that you have to deal with, boo. And I'm not even trying to be funny, but you can't come at people like that and expect them not to bring up your past. Because you have a long rap sheet. going to be rubbed in my face over and over. Yeah, you just put all the fries, too. <laughs> I don't live in the past. You guys do. I'm moving forward, and so are my Beezers. My loyal Beezers. And that's all that matters. And the rest, well, whatever. Also, I would like everyone to reach out to people who are having their names mispronounced over and over. Go ask them if that matters. Okay, so I'm not going to get into that. Um, but a mis-enunciation of names happens all the time, girl. Chill. Chill. Okay? Chill. It's, it's not necessarily a racist thing. People mispronounce my name all the time. Do I get mad? No. My name is nine letters, okay? I don't get mad. I know I got a complicated ass name. But you you're you're you are digging too deep on this girl. It's it's, it's not that deep. It's not that deep. And I and she y'all if y'all know she's talking about Sala. When when everybody first found his name out, they were calling him Salad. But in their defense, some of that could have been typos, and it just stuck because she got so mad. Anyway, because when you type on your phone and you type Sala, it spell checks it for Salad. <laughs> it, it really does. Oh Lord. Go ask them if that matters. I will let you know. There's one um, reaction channel, particularly who keeps being racist um, just because that's the only way they feel they can get to me out of desperation. But every harassment is being documented and noted. And I'm actually in contact with a representative from YouTube about a lot of things. This might take a while. Maybe, I don't know how long. How, I mean, I guess while they look into it. But um, I'm not, I'm, I'm tired of not fighting for my rights in any way. So if y'all only do foodie beauty reactions, stop. Expand your horizon. Do other reactions off other content creators because our girl has a point on this. Once you keep going after one person, it easily turns into harassment. Not necessarily bullying, but it turns into harassment when you only cover one 
public figure. That's why if you notice the news and media outlets, they cover all celebrities. They don't just cover one celebrity. They cover all of them. Um, they cover some a little bit more because they're in the spotlight at that point in time, but they do cover all. That's just a little hint and note for all the reaction channels. Y'all probably already know that. But it, again, and yes, Lindsay, she can fat shame. I mean, not fat shame. She can do the same thing to Dee Dee and Nader. Use, like, mispronounce their names purposely, but it's okay. Again, okay. that's the rights to my privacy. I need to take responsibility for myself. But where's the community's responsibility and everything? So it's okay to just be racist and just say racist things now. And just, but the, so the only. No, 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 foodie. Back up, girl. Back up, boo boo, shitty. Okay. It's not okay to be racist or say racist things or say or tell people they look like buckwheat. Okay. Or call people. It's not, it's not okay. But you made this community. You developed this community based on your morals, your actions, and your beliefs. People are only mocking you. They're only mocking what you do to other people. Now, is it right? No. I don't think nobody should be racist or blah, blah, blah. But you are racist at, at times. Okay. I don't know your background as far as like what you did before YouTube, if you're racist or blah, blah, blah. But you said some pretty nasty racist things on this channel. And I've heard it. The onus is still on me for that, right? Because of something, um, uh, a comment I made a long, 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 long time ago that wasn't even racist. Mm, yeah. Okay. You're all crappy. See, you, so you could only decide what's racist and what's not. No, foodie, it's not how it works. And every time you do something racist like that, I will report you. All right, so just a brief history on this racism accusation, which is so contrived and so far-fetched. It's insane. But anyway, this person, Charlie Gold, was a reaction channel up my butt and around the corner since I started YouTube, basically. Fat shaming me for years, using my content for years. And one day I snapped... And since she liked to make fun of my name and everything else, you know, I decided to call her instead of Charlie Gold because she definitely isn't worth the value of gold and doesn't is not shiny like gold is what I was referring to. Not her skin color. The color of her soul was coal. Her No, no girl. You you can't see her soul. So all you know her is based off of reactions she's done, but you don't know what her soul is like, okay? You call her Charlie Cole based on her skin color. And then you tried to do damage control years ago, a while ago. And now you're still trying to do damage control. You know what? You were mad because her reads were on point. You're mad because her reads were true and they stuck to you like glue. <laughs> Yeah, can we put a one in chat for the lovely Charlie Gold? Period. Even, even if I don't like her, put a one in chat. Period. Her personality is coal. She is valueless, like coal. Her opinions are like coal, not gold. It was a play on the term gold, the opposite of gold in mineral terms. I guess in my brain, call me stupid, fine, but I'm not racist was coal. The opposite of gold in my mind was coal. Now, if Charlie's name was Charlie Christmas and I called her Charlie Cole, then yes, I would agree that that is very racist. However, no, that's not racist. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye. Um, that person is obviously just bitter and jealous that they can't be me and have my life and have the men in my life. Um, it's a problem and it's actually scary and it is harassment and I'm dealing with it behind the scenes. Also, I just want to say desperately that foodie is racist. There's many videos here, her own words that shows when she, the things don't go her way. That she, that's how she is. I need to find these videos. Y'all, I really find these videos. Thank you to world. If y'all know any, videos where Chantel is being racist. I want to do like a whole series of this, y'all. So please, you can feel free to DM me on Instagram or through my uh, link on YouTube or yeah, my email address is on YouTube. So send me the links in there and I will create something 
and we can sit back and kiki and, and, and point her ass out and like, see, you remember you said this? Remember you said this? But you're not racist, girl. Wait, who is this? Who is this? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Who is this? Okay, Lindsay, the Slimming Filters are the true MVP. <laughs> Them filters are hard at work. Them filters work harder than my ancestors when they first got to America. Girl. <laughs> oh, no. So my phone is dying, walking, you up. Oh, it's okay. You two, well, listen, girl, we still gonna be here for a hot minute. We got a couple more videos to get through with Foodie, okay? Oh, okay, Lynn, you been digging deep, boo? You got some tea? Oh, email me, Lynn. Email me. Or um, DM me on Instagram. Whichever one. Uh, you will not find a Tinder account for Sala anywhere. So have fun with that. That's foodie. That is clearly fake. People are trying so hard to do anything to make me miserable and split us up. Again, it's not going to work. Only God will keep me from this man and my future. I also don't know where people... God, can you step in? God, can you step in, please? <laughs> I'm begging of you to step into this <laughs> foolishness. Call a spade a spade, God. Are surprised about my bitchy community posts. My community post being ageist was directly in response, as I said in my video, to this old woman constantly fat shaming me. So, sorry, unbelievable. Okay, let's. So Liz, I can tell you here if you like. Let me ask you this. Is it something that we have receipts on? Or is it something that we can prove? If it's something we can prove, I'm all here for it. But if it's something that, that we need receipts on, I, I have receipts because she's quick to throw strikes and quick to throw everything else. Don't need people calling her out. I need some receipts to back the bag this up, okay? If he needs receipts. Um right by the bean by the boom. <laughs> he wants to escape. My God, does does she mean immigration? Because she already blocked from Canada. Ooh. That's why they're going to be traveling together. That's why she's coming back home for three weeks, she says, and they're going to travel. That's exactly what she's going to do until the, the block is lifted or until they believe that their marriage is real. So, yes, um, I guess for those who are just like, let's see her rage. <laughs> uh, here you go, I guess. I well, Lisa, if that's the case, you tell him, you, you, you tell Salah that I'm in America. No, <laughs> we got green cards. No, <laughs> let me shut the hell up. <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, it's all providable looking at Quay. Okay, okay, well, 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 drop it, girl, drop it. Drop it like a side for us. Drop it. Old women, ma'am, put some respect on, on the elders, okay? <laughs> Put some respect on the elders. <laughs> I don't know what makes your day, floats your boat, makes you alive in life, but apparently seeing me rage does it. And really, that's really sad that that actually speaks more about you than it ever will about me, honey. Okay, honey, this is a light rage, honey. And maybe my life is too calm going in the right direction. So it, it has no rage. So I'm missing something in my life. I'm missing a rage. Doesn't mean that my life is shit. I'm just missing something. I'm missing a rage, foodie. Thank you, honey. Stay mad. Now, I've addressed my haters ad nauseum, so I want to address my followers and my beezers, and I just want to say I miss you guys so much, and again, I thank you. I'm in a transition period in my life. I will um, be back as soon as I can, but there will be a lot of changes. Like, a lot. But it's going to be a good thing. So be patient. So let me ask you this. Do y'all think that, because this, this, this is pretty much over with. So do y'all think that that's why, she, like, because Leah, I've heard that before. You can't marry if in Kuwait on tourist visa. That makes sense. That makes sense. Because she's not a citizen of 
Kuwait. Um, Henry Records is a little different, but I totally get it because they have Muslim laws, Muslim rules, whatever else. But do y'all think that's why they're going to travel the world to find out where they can get married at and then live there? Do y- y'all, mm, that's going to be the arc. Where can we get married at in the world and live happily ever after? What? Is that the, girl, if it ain't about me, let's kiki. Stay mad. After the, last, the only person that's staying mad is Foodie Beauty. Right, girl. Okay. Two. Uh oh. Salah and her went to the embassy to see about him going to Canada and they got to turn down. He got to. Yeah. So that's what uh, his friend was saying um, that he's been blocked. And that's crazy. Okay. What's number three? What's number three, girl? The apartment they live in actually belongs to Allah, so they're playing dangerous game. Oh, oh Lord. Wow. But that's but that's why he's being so nice. He says he doesn't want to harm Salah. He doesn't want girl, if it ain't about me, let's keep key. Salah isn't a citizen there either. So we got these two non Kuwait ass citizens living in Kuwait, stirring up drama and bullshit with people who live in Kuwait and own property. Yep, that was God's intervention. That was God's intervention. Okay, God stepped in. See, you you spoke too soon, foodie. Don't bring up <laughs> don't bring up the Lord and your bullshit. Okay, because because God don't play. <laughs> and be proud to be a weezer. I love you guys. I'll see you soon. Hello, welcome back to. Another- now that's what I can't understand. I can't understand why she gave up so much so much of her checks up, y'all. That baffles me. Like I really cannot understand that. Y'all, can y'all hold on for like two seconds? I gotta run downstairs and start the drying because that dryer don't be getting hot. Give me two seconds. I'm 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 just gonna leave her sitting like this. We ain't gonna put nothing on, I promise. Hold on one second, I'll be back.
Okay, y'all, sorry about that. We are back again. Camera looking shady? Camera good? Camera good, camera good. Yeah, camera good. Okay, let's jump back into foodie. Do another video. Today's video, I will be talking about the hijab. I am hearing all over the internet the following. Why do you have a hijab on your head? So, I'm here. Who was that? For? Okay, how my camera's a little off. Hold on. Who was that though? Who said to ask her why she got a hijab on her head? Oh, hold on. That's, that's the computer camera. Hold on a second. <laughs> that looks trash though. It put that on HD Pro. There we go. Who was that to ask? I'm curious. I'm here to answer your question. I want to first say I realize that in oh, parts of different. the world, women everywhere are fighting for the right to remove the hijab. There are women, and I fully acknowledge this, that are in situations that are abusive and they have no choice but to wear this. Okay, she is disgraceful. Okay, y'all, I don't know if people picked up on this, but y'all look at this. She has got her butt sitting up here in this hijab full of cat hair. Full of cat hair, look at her. She's in a hijab full of cat hair. This is disrespectful. I thought that Muslims were supposed to be like the cleanest people, you know what I'm saying? Because they, 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 they pray a lot. She said they prayed all this cat hair on her, looking like, oh, Molly the maid. Lord. And for them, it is not a positive experience. On the other hand, in other parts of the world, such as France, there are women fighting hard to put back on the hijab. They see that banning the hijab banning the burqa is actually discriminatory she, she don't get it. and violates their human rights she never will. i'm here to talk about my personal beliefs and experiences with the hijab i can assure you despite what everyone is saying online that i wear this with the utmost respect and humbleness i just think it will take people a while to adjust to my new changes because I change very quickly. In all honesty, I don't communicate my inner deepest most thoughts all times of the day with you guys, with the public. So there are a lot of internal changes that have been <laughs> happening inside me. Okay, so we can all agree there has been no internal changes whatsoever happened to Foodie, okay? We're on the same page. Um, she did she needs the the cleaning flow chart hanging in her room <laughs> and in her bathroom too, okay? He has not paid it back. Oh, he said, I thought he said he paid it back yesterday. That's what his friend, his friend told us he paid it back. I, girl, I don't know. But when you owe somebody some money, they're vindictive. They are very vindictive. You know, people, people money. Uh, she'll be nasty for life. Okay, okay, no, well said. I don't think she's ever gonna be like a cleanliness girl, um, ma'am. You don't know respect or being humble. You haven't changed. Still a huge asshole. Ooh. <laughs> okay, every change is purely superficial. And for the camera, carnivore, you said that right. Okay, period. Hey, Burgundy Rose, how you doing? He paid it back. Okay, I'll show proof. Okay, okay, so it's payback. Okay. Um, I actually thought she would change. I thought she would change too, YouTube world. I'm silly. I, I, I'm silly with you. We, we can both be silly together. And when I first, what it basically just comes down to, let me rewind. I have entered a serious relationship with a wonderful man who comes from an Islamic nation. And out of respect and devotion to one man, I choose to wear this in respect for myself, respect for my partner, respect for his culture. And Foodie, this is new to me. I know you respect yourself. I know you have that much self-respect, but I'm glad you got it, I guess. Okay, period. And I am not being forced to wear this. I wear this as my own choosing. And I chose this the moment I tried it on, actually. There's something that transformed in me the moment I put on the hijab. Did it transform for, for you to go wash your ass before you put on that hijab? 
Okay, did it transform to do laundry? Did it transform to take a lip brush and roll it over so your cat hair could come off? Did you only put that on to make you look slimmer? Because we know you love these filters, girl. Okay, you we, you love these filters. Okay, so the hijab is not is another filter in a way for me. For her, that's why the change was so instantaneous. It's almost as if I've opened up a new door, a new world. <laughs> I what feel... happened? You, you you already shut that door. You closed that door already. You opened that door and slammed it shut. As soon as you opened that door and stepped in it, you stepped back out and slammed that door shut. You straight in our faces. <laughs> Comforted. I feel calm. I feel more respectful towards myself. <laughs> I feel like my energy Light is protected. Mary. I feel like my bubble is protected. I feel like less people are going to approach me in my bubble. I feel more reserved. I feel more calm. And this is why I like to wear this hijab, out of respect. Foodie, I don't know in, in what world that you live in, but who is going to approach you on the street? Okay, if they didn't approach you before, okay, they're definitely not going to approach you in this hijab. That's for sure. But they did not approach you before. You just try to say that because they did. You would not be on these dating sites, which I don't knock. Anybody's on a dating site, okay? Period. At the end of the day, I don't knock it. But, okay, you're on a dating site because it's not working approaching in person for some reason, which we all have our, all have our reasons, okay? Respect for my partner as a symbol to my devotion to him, as well as my devotion to becoming a more respectful, humble, modest person and woman. Modest? So, uh, there's, there's another lie. So every lie she tell, we don't call it out. That's a lie. She ain't modest. There are a lot of misconceptions about the hijab. So I did a little bit of research on my own because I did feel a little bit guilty at first. Like, am I allowed to wear this? What's going on? You know, the cat hair, but... I have a lot of cats in black and cat hair. No bueno. So I found. Did I skip? I, I, I might skip something. I think I may have skipped something. Hold on, let's see. I found a website okay. called Hot. Yeah. So I don't know. Um, yeah. First of all, girl, it's hot on till for you to own a cat. As your husband, you know, as your husband probably told you. So the fact that you're sitting up with all this cat hair, yeah. You caught it. You caught the cat hair. Great. Um, but yeah, everybody wants foodie, girl. Every, she, everybody wants foodie, Mary. She did. She hot. She a hot topic. She hot. She. <laughs> what are you talking about, Chef? Our girls, the foodie view men are lined up at the Rattle Villa. Okay, <laughs> right behind Pete's. <laughs> out of respect for her dumbness, knock it out. Of the park twaddle. <laughs> Listen, y'all be cracking me up some these topics. Boat hijab, and it's a hijab uh, shopping website. And the CEO actually <laughs> yeah, answers this question job. very, very thoroughly. Um, if I'm not Muslim, can I wear a hijab? And a lot of the points make sense. So I'll just read a little bit of it for you. Somebody asked, this is an advice column. Somebody asked, I just recently became interested in hijabs. I've always found them beautiful and exuding such class Sorry, and have been thinking of wearing one. For the most part, I dress relatively modestly. And then the person replied, thank you for reaching out. You might be surprised to learn that we get asked this question a lot. Did y'all see that? <laughs> I don't know, y'all see the floating cat hair? <laughs> God is trying to condemn her. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Let's make it bigger. Oh, you won't see it right there, hold on. Watch the floating cat hair, y'all. Watch the floating cat hair. Honestly, and then the person replied, thank you. Y'all seen it? Thank you for reaching out. You may be surprised to get asked this question a lot. God prescribed hijab and modest dress for Muslims just as he did the Jews and Christians before us. That's actually true. If you look at the Virgin Mary, her head is completely covered. As I'm sure you know, Christians used to cover their hair, but the practice has been long abandoned. This is in obedience to 1 Corinthians 11.5, which says, Every woman who prays with her head uncovered dishonors her head, for that is one and the same as if her head were shaved. So they also say Muslims do not own. She is not sitting up here giving us a preaching. She is not Pastor Foodie. <laughs> pa 
Pastor Foodie, girl, you quote Bible verses that you're reading online. I'm proud of you finally doing that. But you can't teach something that you don't know. You can't. Not own the head covering. It is a mandate that predates Islam. By the same token, Islam was revealed by God to the Prophet Muhammad. Peace be upon him for all of mankind. Not for any one person or type of people. If any Muslim is offended by you wearing hijab, it is due to their own error and not rooted in Islam. Our goal at Hot Hijab is to promote modesty in dress and actions, not only to head covering. If you wear the headscarf inconsistently, that is your choice. Hopefully you get to a point where you're going out to a point where going out without the headscarf feels unnatural and you continue to wear it all the time. Um, so this is, again, a personal choice. The emphasis is always on the choice. And again, I realize there are a lot of women who do not have a choice. Um, there's a lot of women who are also fighting for the freedom to wear the hijab because they feel right. This is their way of devoting themselves to God. And it is wrong to tell somebody how they should feel, how they should dress, how they should feel in a certain attire. It's all personal. We all just want to feel good in our skin. I've actually toned down the makeup a lot too. Um, okay, her nails is slaying. Now, y'all see her nails? The nails is giving. The nails is giving. But why has she got her nails done? Y'all know this one thing. Foodie used to always have her nails done, right? Always. Why is she going to get her nails done in Kuwait? Y'all notice that, right? No nails in Kuwait. I feel better, more natural without those huge lashes on my eyelashes. And this is, I have a bit of, I don't have any foundation on or anything. Um, yes, I think my camera has some filters. I apologize. But I do have some. <laughs> <laughs> yes, my camera has some filters, but I apologize. Girl, take them off. <laughs> Don't apologize for something that you can fix and just choose not to. I do have some lip gloss and lip liner on. I like this style. There's so many different shawls and abayas and styles to try. So I guess just a little bit about the history of the hijab. Hijabs were originally used, you know, coverings were used in the deserts and things like that to protect people from the sun. So it became a practical thing then. Um, no, no. She just read to us why, where the hijab comes from. She, she just read us where it comes from. Now she's saying it's protected from the heat. Okay, now you're being disrespectful, okay? Now you're reading us information, but you're not retaining it. You're just reading it. You just gave us false information. Again, Foodie, the first time you, you was reading it, it was correct. It was right on the money, whatever, ever. Now you're you're giving false information because you're speaking from your own knowledge, which is, which is very little for, for, for hijabs um religious it's actually um a practice that predates islam and it actually uh is used for many different reasons okay let me tell you something right now okay i do not miss the buttons on the phone i love my touch screen okay i love my touch screen i don't miss shit on the buttons nope screw the buttons the buttons were played out they get sticky they get stuck you get food in them no over the buttons sorry youtube world reasons today so again Anything I do in regards to the hijab and the changes I'm making, I'm very serious. And I know that time will tell this. And I appreciate you following me on my journey with much love and respect. <laughs> so just in summary, I guess it just comes down to um, my personal choice. And I just feel good. I feel good wearing the hijab. Not a circus tee. Personally me. Be right back. Okay, Lisa. So, so no, oh, I'm not an instantaneously <laughs> changed woman overnight. I have, I see people <laughs> trying to rub my past in my hey, face. Hey, Charlie's mom, how you um, doing? I understand that it's such a drastic change. But honestly, if we're really honest, it's a good one. I feel like it's <laughs> a healthy cool. change for me spiritually, physically, emotionally, everything. Behind the scenes, of course, some of these lifestyle changes and bad habits I'm trying to get rid of, it is a little difficult. But at the same time, it's not as hard as I thought. I don't know. Something just clicked in me. And I... Stop. Okay. I thought I'd be reacting. Y'all up here reading shit. Y'all up here reading her to filth. Okay. <laughs> y'all mean y'all to cut it out and get a comment section. <laughs> 
Y'all been reading her to feel. I can't even read some comments, okay? For fear I'm gonna get struck. <laughs> she disrespectful. Yes, I can't. My mom was a Muslim that married a Christian, and I can tell you one thing. Your beliefs got nothing to do with how you treat people. And she's none of that beliefs. Yes. Yes. How you treat people is your own personal character. And your character shows, foodie. It shows. Ha ha. My phone won't let me type today. <laughs> I, that's every day for you, Wookie lover. <laughs> you be in too much of a hurry to gangster type. <laughs> that's what that be. And good. I'm glad to hear you're doing good, boo. Different and better. So. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys. <laughs> Y'all remember the song? <laughs> this is our girl's national theme song <laughs> when she walked into a room. <laughs> Hi, Marhaba. Welcome back to another video. So as you can see, this is a video. I think you've heard me say many times on my channel, guys, the following words. Change Lord, the filter is back, okay? She may have look like a super model. Fool, you know, damn well you out of pocket for this. <laughs> okay, if y'all ask me, she started using the filters more and more now because, because of the simple fact Salah was now watching her on YouTube. Now, I don't think he went all the way back. Or if he did, she told him that she lost weight and she's a little bit lighter, okay? So the fact that now she's using filters, that only makes his friend's story more accurate because his friend did say, Mr. Shabib, said that when she arrived, he was shook. Salah was shook, basically. He didn't expect her to be this much overweight because she was putting on <laughs> these lovely ass filters, fat fishing people. <laughs> Hence to why she turned, she turned her comments off. <laughs> she turned her comments off. So people went comment about the filters. And Salah would never see it. So Salah has no idea that these are fucking filters until she arrives in Kuwait and meets him at the airport. You knew he was shocked as hell at, uh, to see her in the airport. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> Secondhand embarrassment. <laughs> but... But where is this hijab? Where is this hijab at? This hijab is very, very nice. This outfit is something she could have worn over there. Y'all, she didn't think about this. It didn't pack. If she would have packed this hijab, his family would have liked her, I feel like. She would have had more class. You know what I'm saying? This is a classy-ass hijab. I think it's giving. It's serving. Like, the filter's working well with it, too. <laughs> it goes well with the filters. Changes happen so fast for me. Sometimes you meet the love of your life when you least expect it. Things Let's happen for a reason. For <laughs> so I just want to say I don't expect people to understand my journey right now. And that's totally normal because you're not living it. And I am the one living it. <laughs> so that makes total sense. Yes. So the topic of... No, stop lying. You're not the one living it. That filter's the one living it right now. <laughs> today's video is going to probably upset... Hey, Reaper Curl, how you doing? A lot, if not all of my Beezers. I will not be doing live streams anymore. I will be going to a recorded video format from now on. Foodie, cut the lies out. You, you tried that for two days. Hey, you missed your visas. No, you missed them checks and them views and the less work you had to do because you could sit on live for hours and make checks. Hours. But you can't make videos. You know what I'm saying? Again, she can put more ads into her live stream than she can in these videos. And 
I think this will be better. Hey, MC. Me, and I've had a lot of time to think about it. I want to say thank you to those who have been supportive to me anyways, regardless of any stage uh, of my life that I've been going through, whether it's been difficult to watch, to support me. I understand that. And that brings me to why I want to do more recorded videos instead of live streams. Doing the live streams and doing them so often is really compromising my privacy. And it is actually taking a toll on my mental health. When I was in therapy, my therapist did mention this to me that comments and cons Absolutely right. Foodie will only go live when her money's falling, when she's not getting the views on the videos or when she needs more money for something. Y'all, that is a trend she has. Um, and yes, these live streams do go get a little invasive because we hear everything between you and Pete's. We hear it, all your deliveries. We watch because you be on live for six or seven hours a day, girl. Quit. It won't compromise it if you take down the time. Instead of you being on live for six hours, hop on live for like an hour. You get more people. Because people are like, oh, I'm going to miss them. I'm trying to catch them live. Girl, quit. She trying to feed us with bullshit. It ain't working. And constant negativity might be affecting me in ways that I don't realize. You think? And I think that has manifested itself in anger rages and so on and so forth that you have seen that I'm so infamous for. I will say that that will not be happening anymore. I will be turning a new leaf. I'm trying really hard. I have been talking about it for years. And finally, today I wake up <sighs> and I'm ready to do it. And that's just how I operate. I'm actually really serious <laughs> about. <laughs> Come get me before I hit 70. I'm dead, girl. Right. If you sway down the way, come get me. No, <laughs> I'm kidding. Look. Foodie gonna be on our ass. Watch. Uh, oh, be quiet. Emperor. Somebody said that a couple, like an hour ago. I'm dead. Y'all all call it Emperor Hajabawaki. <laughs> the ham colored turban. <laughs> Oh my God, Haya, right here, she raging. Her rages are starting to change. Her rages are not like they used to be in Cuba, how they was like, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're becoming more subtle, but they're still rages. You can tell she's angry in, in these, some of these videos. Being very respectful to the culture. <laughs> this is still very, very new for me. And I really appreciate your patience. And if I do anything to disrespect any culture or religion, please know I do not do it with intention. And it, I really apologize if it is a result of my ignorance in any way. I will do a video. You went over there recording a mosque. That was my ignorance. That was plain stupidity, okay? Because you're very smart, okay? But you do stupid shit. <laughs> you shouldn't have filmed that mosque at the end of the day because you gave too much too much tea that you didn't wash your ass before you stepped in that room it's a holy room okay clean yourself first before you walk into that room but don't even film it that's that's between you and god film the outside shows how pretty the outside is whatever else yes show you walk into the mosque but don't take the camera in there don't do that don't yo on my in the oil fields the right and dressing moderately in another video but overall as you will see there won't be too many changes whole <laughs> that you probably won't miss the things that i will be changing and if you do well maybe you really didn't want the best for me in the first place but again this is all about what i want for my life it always has been and it always will remain that way I yes, foodie, we know. Ever since you've been a child, it's all about you, 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 and nobody else. So anyway, it's like she cares, only cares about her. Fuck everybody else. Fuck whoever she walks all over. Forget who she steps on. Forget who she has to cross. Forget who she has to burn. It's all about her. I feel like you guys will think maybe this video looks a lot rehearsed. It is a little more rehearsed than my usual content. So at first it will be okay, Lynn. I was wondering about the eyelashes. <laughs> she shouldn't even be wearing false eyelashes. She fake as fuck. <laughs> That's not funny. But I was wondering about the eyelashes and the hijabs. Cause if if I know, cause I noticed she hasn't put the eyelashes back on since she's been over there 
it will be weird and take some time to get used to. But at the same time, I want to start doing things with more intention. And I think this is actually really good for me. I feel good. I don't feel oppressed in any way. I feel absolutely like I'm making a right choice. So yes, this is going to be a very different foodie beauty for you guys. But at the same time, I hope that it's one that you will welcome with open arms and we will have a lot of a lot of fun. Again, I think this is really good for my mental health and for my privacy. And it is time for me to start making these changes that I talk so much to death about with you guys. And your Yeah, and you still continue to keep talking about these changes that we have not all seen. Girl, show. Oh, hey, Jack, I didn't see you come in the door. How you doing, Jack? Welcome to the live stream, sir. What's going on with you? Um, yeah, she hasn't changed. Nothing has changed about a foodie beauty except for her where her feet stand or where her ass sit at now. <laughs> that, that's it. She seriously insults the Muslim religion costumes. It's horrendous. Yeah, I mean, the costumes. Customs. She acts like it's a costume. That's what she acts a costume. It's not a costume. Of course, you're, you're not oppressed, white woman. <laughs> Wait, wait till she out on the street in Canada. And you're frustrated. And the Muslims me. And catch so her. Go. <laughs> I actually like how I look more like this covered up than with with everything hanging out for the world to see. I feel like I'm respecting myself more. So <laughs> right. I hope you Call guys understand it. that. I don't expect everyone to agree with it. We don't have to agree with one another. On our viewpoints we're not expected to but again please be respectful of one another now my plan is to have as i'm a canadian y'all leave peace out of this <laughs> wookie lover says sala is the peach of kuwait oh that is classic classic i have a homestead here and i will never forget about pete's and my cats so I'm planning on dealing with the move, getting all settled in and everything like that. And then possibly in the future, I'm not sure exactly when, one day you will see me in a video where I'm already in another country, but. No, that's a whole lie. No, 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 <laughs> Girl, you gave us the full loadout. We knew the time you were at the bus station. To the time, well, you okay from the time your aunt picked you up, okay, from the time you went to the bus station, from the time you was at the airport, the time you got on the plane, we knew about it. To the time you was landed in Kuwait, we knew that's the key, key girl. You couldn't keep shit from us. She cosplayed as a married woman, <laughs> he is the pizza queen. <laughs> I am not planning on moving to another country, just taking up and packing up and, and leaving my whole life behind here and my whole existence here, forgetting about who I am as a person, that's completely not yeah, this my every, goal. Disrespects, disrespects and everywhere she goes. <laughs> I think people who truly know me know that. I realize in Canada here, I have so many responsibilities to my loved ones, to my family, to you guys. And honestly, no foodie. Let's just be honest. No, no foodie. Don't use me in this. You don't owe me shit. <laughs> you don't owe me shit, girl. Leave your life and I'm just a spectator, okay? <laughs> I'm just a spectator. Leave your life, boo. Honest, you guys know if we actually do bees overseas, it is going to be tip top quality content. I I hope that you guys are <laughs> pardon me. I may be a little bias in the situation y'all but where is the tip top uh, uh uh damn videos okay where is all the tip top shit at like all we get is low budget films <laughs> low budget short ass films is all we got from you foodie where's the tip top content i don't see the tip top content where's it at um no labu said you try but put that tax man on your ass <laughs> I'm 
Charlie's mom said, where can she nickname him KP? <laughs> you guys are excited with me in this because I'm oh, so Lord. excited. There's so many things to do. And I feel like, you know, we can go to cinema. We can explore the different um, landmarks, the history, the food, the culture, everything about it. And it's going to be such a wonderful experience. And may I know that she, that she may I know that she said food. <laughs> I don't think she can go anywhere without trying different foods or the same food. She tried a little bit different foods. I, I'll give her forward, that. I just feel super excited about life, and these changes have come really fast for me too. My head is spinning as well, and it's going to be what's good for me. And at the end of the day, that's what I always need to try to do. Do I always do that? No, absolutely <laughs> not. At the time, do I think that's the best decision for me? Yes. Yeah, eat mystery so, animals, what eat, to expect smoke, eat, forward? and I repeat. Think that I will be doing more videos, more vlogs, as I said, and those will consist of a variety of different things, talking about different things, doing different things is my goal. I would like to really talk about different things about my life, but not be so personal. <laughs> personal relationships with people. Everything in <laughs> Wookie Love is <laughs> if she had any cowboy ethic, her video wasn't such. She dreams big and sleeps through the journey. <laughs> I ain't never heard no shit like that, Wookie Love. Where'd you where you get this shit from? Girl, Kiki. Okay. Inappropriate to talk about. That's very, very private. Uh, very, very taboo, which is what you are used to seeing uh, uh, with me. So I realize this is going to be a very, very drastic change, and it's going to take a lot of time to adjust to it. But again, people have a right to choose how they want to live. I have a right to choose how I want to live. And for me, this is just what feels right right now. And I am super excited for this. Where were we at, Lynn? Where were Lynn at? Okay, Lynn said, we, we know she didn't wash for two weeks because she couldn't fit through the bathroom door in the first apartment. That's what the key key was. I was trying to make sense of all that. But yeah, she couldn't fit through the door. So she didn't wash for two weeks. Wow. That's why I saw kept making that. <laughs> He couldn't find a pool. She can go swimming in for a quick second. Like I would have got a pool. I would got a pool with swimming. Yeah, I sure would have. Excited for this new adventure, a new life, a new love. Hi, Sam. <laughs> and I hope you all are too. <laughs> I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with my membership. Well, keep walking, Wookie. I am thinking about that, and I will update you further. Because it is not live streams. I understand if you want to <laughs> stop your membership. I am planning on finding another use for them, maybe some extra content that is members only so that- Girl, cut it. You never do no kind of extra content. People lost their money for, for, for a whole week. <laughs> way they will be private and only members will be able to access them. And I would ask that you please respect that. Otherwise, I will have to try to go to other venues to protect myself, which I don't want to do. So. I already have enough on my plate, as you all know. So going forward, I know the changes are going to be so drastic for my content. But again, for me in my life, anyway, I'm super happy. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you. Bye. It is ridiculous. Okay, y'all. So... As you can see, we're kind of backtracking from Foodie being in Kuwait to Foodie right before she get ready to leave. And then we got a couple months before she actually left in between her and Natter, blah, 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 whatever else. Because this, we all know, she deleted a lot of shit from her channel. Okay. So I, and I didn't want to dig through everybody's videos to find all these videos. So I just grabbed these videos because I knew they were here. But anyway, 
Um, this is another one of her videos where she tells people to stop, stop telling fat people how to eat. <laughs> Carbs are fine. Okay, foodie, that is where you're absolutely wrong. If you're a big woman and you want to lose weight, you need some carbs, but I guarantee you, you're overdoing the carbs over because carbs turn to sugars. I mean, sugars turn to carbs, blah, 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 whatever else. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. Ridiculous that an overweight person is told what to do or what they can and cannot eat, what they can and cannot wear on a public platform. It is ridiculous that people. Foodie. I'm overweight and people don't tell me what I can and can't eat, okay? It's hard to be in the right weight as to what America or the standard for the right weight is, okay? Most of us are considered overweight based on the standards. That don't mean that we don't, we're not comfortable in our own skin. That don't mean we don't try to work on our, you know what I'm saying? Anyway. Well, mental illness shame others. When you say things like, she's manic, She's bipolar. You're saying it in a derogatory, condescending way. And if I was, and if I did have that mental illness, what's your point? Why are you illness shame, mental illness shaming? Don't use it as an insult. How is it okay for skinny mukbangers to gorge on thousands of calories, but it's not okay for me to eat any fucking thing other than salad, <laughs> no, she didn't. No, no, she did. Okay, I gotta make sure I heard this right. Hold on, let's do an instant, instant replay of Foodie saying this. For me to eat any, <laughs> she is obviously pissed. <laughs> she pissed. Don't use it as an insult. <laughs> How is it okay for skinny mukbangers to gorge on thousands of calories, but it's not okay for me to eat any fucking <laughs> thing other than salad and lean protein? How is it that- Okay, this is how they're able to eat that. First of all, they don't do this off camera, okay? They only do it on camera. Okay, and they usually don't post every single day either. Okay, and then they work out. They work out. I know a couple of mukbangers um, who eat a lot and they work out. They go for walks. They're active people. They don't just sit around all day. When you sit around, you gain weight. You sit on your ass, foodie. Lose the weight. Develop a healthy lifestyle. Okay, then start being a mukbanger. Eat and eat what you want. But your views are gonna drop because, like, listen, if you'd have kept eating fat and not saying nothing, you would get millions of views. Look at Nick. Nick got three million followers. Okay, he go through more than what you go through. <laughs> but he a whole shit show. <laughs> How is it that people have an issue with me eating corn tortilla chips, but don't have an issue with people eating fucking bacon and cheese and waffles? just because they're on a keto diet, because it's a trendy diet. How is that okay? I've turned comments off again because the minute I open them up, it's just constant, constant negativity about what I'm eating. Thank you. She can't decide, she can't decide for whether what's shaming or what's criticism. Everything you say about her, you're shaming her. You're shaming, in other words. <laughs> and shaming me for what I'm eating, like that fucking helps. I have t said so many times before that I'm not eliminating foods, I'm not restricting. It's my life, let me fucking live it the way I want to. If you have a problem with it, then just leave my channel. Hold on, this is foodie with no filters. <laughs> this is foodie with no filters and no hijab. <laughs> I'm keeping comments off. I don't know. I hope for a long time because honestly, I'm so much fucking happier when I don't have to listen to it. When I don't have to hear people judging me for what I eat just because I'm fat. You don't know the full story on my health. You don't know everything. 
you don't know what I'm working on in therapy. You don't know my real blood sugar levels. You only know what I told you. And I shouldn't have opened that can of worms. Oh, Lord, how I wish I didn't. But even. Yeah, that's your fault, Felicity. You involve people with, in your life to get them interested. Now they got opinions. That's what happens. People get opinions about my life all the time. Um, all the shaming, and she is the queen of insults for everyone about everything. You know what? That's one thing I can say. Her reads are everything. Her reads are everything, okay? She does have some funny ass reads, and she comes for the juggler. There's no. What, you, I agree with her 100%. 100%. But even if I didn't, people would still make those comments. Because look at someone like Hungry Fat Chick's comments. Constantly just go, like, just shaming and shaming for what she's eating. It's her life. Let her live it. It's my life. Let me live it. Again, if you're so bothered, then just leave. People are sickeningly obsessed with what fat people put in their mouths. It's ridiculous. Yeah. And if I have to hear one more time. Do you know why people are obsessed? Because when people are overweight and they're asking for help or they want to lose weight and they want to be, be more healthy and they ask for suggestions and advice and then you turn around and gorge, you're right. People, now people are like, what the fuck? People are like, if you're going to kill yourself, I'm going to watch you do it. Because basically what she does and what overweight people do, and, and even a hungry f fat chick, I love her because she is so sweet. She wouldn't hurt a fly, y'all. She is so sweet. But in reality, she's committing suicide. They're committing suicide. By sitting up here at their weights uh, with the mobility issues they're having, they're committing suicide. your channels promoting, you're influencing people to be obese just by existing. You are. And just by eating you really something are. I want to eat is so fat phobic. It's disgusting. No, 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 it's not fat phobic. Because, and, and here's where it's not fat phobic because you have to think about it. Kids watch your channel. Kids see that and they're, oh my God, she living her best life being fat. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be fat in my best life. But you don't tell them the misery you go through at nighttime, the immobility problems you have, the pain, the suffering. You don't tell them what you go through. You just sit there and eat what you want to eat all day long. And they think it's okay. That's where it becomes a problem. Disgusting. And just be quiet. It's just frustrating as a fat person having to deal with this day in and day out since the beginning of my channel. I don't want to then get your healthy ass off camera and stop eating. That's why I should close my channel there. because I love doing this. I love making videos um, for people who like to watch them, not for people who obsess over everything I do and hate me for it, for what I put in my mouth or for not dieting the way they think I should be for eating carbs. I've had fucking death threats over eating carbs. <laughs> Yeah, that's not funny. Somebody threatened to kill food you're eating carbs. <laughs> well, I mean, you're already killing yourself, girl. I mean, that's that's no excuse, okay? Y'all, please do not send these creators death threats. Let them eat what the fuck you want to eat. Let them kill themselves. We don't need to do the job for them. I've had nasty comments over because I eat too many carbs. I could tell you where to shove your carbs, but you won't like it. <laughs> I'm so sick of the word... It's so triggering. You don't understand that. You're not helping. You think you are. You think that other people being nice are enabling and that you're helping with your shaming, shitty comments. It's the fucking opposite. Okay? Everyone has free will. Everyone's allowed to live their life the way they want to. If I want to be try to be healthy one minute and do what I want the next, that's my fucking prerogative. But just because you <laughs> see me eating rolled tacos or a meal that's not steamed fucking vegetables and quinoa <laughs> does not mean or chaffles or eight pounds of cheese does not mean I'm not doing anything and that I've given up. So yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. Please. It does. Shut it. Zip. Shh, I said shh. I don't want to turn off comments. 
And then even some people I thought were like really good supporters are like. Right. So somebody was telling her that she's killing herself. She took it as a death threat. Girl, see, that's the deflection. She's deflecting her killing herself as somebody. <laughs> that's a death threat, girl. Sit down. <laughs> Have turned on me for for I don't even know what the fuck. Obviously not real supporters to begin with. So you can leave too. Um, I I really don't care. I don't need you. <laughs> I don't care if you want to unsubscribe. I'm not gonna stop living how I want to live just because you disapprove of it. I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm not murdering anybody. I'm not doing anything morally wrong. If I trigger you when you have an eating disorder, don't watch me then. Don't watch me. I'm not responsible for how you. Okay, so I gotta agree with Foodie Beauty on this. Okay, I gotta agree. If she does trigger your food habits, please do not watch her. Don't mess up what your success is and what your weight loss is to watch this and be triggered. Just bypass that ass. Like your success is more important than you being triggered watching this crazy shit show. Okay. At the end of the day, you matter more than anybody else in the world. Oops. For how you live your life or who I'm triggering. I'm not responsible for everyone's actions. You can't um, lay that on some. Yeah, you can. When you're a public figure and you do fucked up shit in the public eye, yeah, you can. You can. You got to be more laid back with it, girl. You cannot just do it on camera and make it. Okay, so if you're a big, if you're big, okay, and you're on YouTube as a muck banger, okay, and you're so concerned about triggering people and you're so tired of the comments, put a trigger warning on the videos. Warning, this video may be triggering. I'm overeating, I'm, I'm a big girl, this may be triggering. And then people can't say shit to you. You can say, well, I warned you, you know what I'm saying, but you don't give Fucking on somebody morning. okay fat people have to eat we have a right to eat what we want to eat just as much as skinny people you think that two chili cheese dogs are any healthier for the skinny person than no, the fat person it's not you know no foodie you're absolutely right it's not any healthier but i guarantee you they're gonna get up and move so it makes it a little bit better you are sitting around all day long either it in the kitchen or in your bedroom yeah i've talked about my blood sugar levels but you know what as i've said also i can't do drastic okay i'm trying to heal my relationship with food and that's the only way i'm going to get anywhere in the first place otherwise it's back to binge city and that's even worse for my diabetes than the tacos i had for dinner <sighs> I want to get these things off my chest. I, I'm sick of being, I'm sick of being demonized for when I do give my opinion, and I'm sick of being demonized for being fat and eating what I want. Anyone who's who's overweight knows how many times have you started a diet and the very next five hours you're stuffing Oreos in your face. Well, guess what? I'm no different than you aren't I? And every single person judge. But let me tell you right now, it takes time. It, no, nobody's perfect the first day. The first day you may take a step back, okay? But it's all about you knowing and being aware of it. If you're aware of it, foodie, then you could change it slowly. But when you constantly do it and there's never a change, you keep seeing the same shit over and over again, you're not trying. You're just simply not trying. You gave up. Person judging me. Every single overweight person judging me has been there. So you really don't have a right to I'm not judging it. you. Jackie. Yeah, it's so hypocritical, but yet it happens. And people love it. She is so pretty. <sighs> I'm so sick of it. So I'm turning my comments off. It's I'm so much happier when they're off. I just feel like I can say what I want. I can do what I want. And I don't have to hear it from complete strangers who just want to shame me for something that really has no effect on them at all. Anyways, that's all I wanted to say. I'm obviously not in a good mood. So it's unfortunate, but for me, I have to think <laughs> of my mental health, my happiness for now. And if it 
affects my I, i'm not even thinking of my views or subscriber count honestly <laughs> i'm thinking of myself for now so i'll see you in the next video okay y'all we've been watch for two hours this has been a great recap of our girl foodie um i'm not gonna go into this other one um hold on yeah, we've done a great recap of Foodie um, from what we have. What the hell? From what we have to go off of from the video she did not delete. Um, Lindsay, no, you didn't say, oh, you reserve diabetes. <laughs> oh my gosh. Y'all make sure y'all hit that subscribe button. Uh, make sure you give this video a th th thumbs up, just a little FYI. Thank you again for everybody who has donated. Uh, we have Pecan Baby, Sam Q, and New York Rican have all contributed to the um, Help Shelf Get a Computer Foundation. <laughs> that doesn't skip. <laughs> it speeds his reactions up. Anywho, anyway. So now, I, again, we are over halfway there. We are $500 off. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I really appreciate everything and support. Even the ones who are here for the views, I really appreciate it. If you're interested on how you can uh, donate, there is links in the description box. Oh, reversed. Oh, you said reversed. <laughs> I thought you said re reserved. I'm sorry, I read that too quickly. <laughs> She'd be a both. She reversed and reserved. <laughs> I'm sorry, Lindsay. But if you're interested on how you can, on how you can, can donate, uh, the description, there is uh, through the links to PayPal and Cash App or description box below. If you don't, I don't say people's names out at all. Um, but if you want me to know who you are, that way I can shout you out. Just put in your YouTube handle and I'll be more than happy to shout you out and provide thank you feedback. As always, stay blessed, stay positive, stay motivated, and I will see you guys in another video. Bye. Your love, your love.